What's up, y'all? This is a really, I hope it'll be a quick video, but it was one that I started the other day and didn't get a chance to finish, but I wanted to come back to because there was um, discomfort and complication, right? With, there was a post that I did. I did a podcast called um, um, Eyes on Whiteness uh, hosted by um, one of my life loves, Maureen Benson. Um, and in it, I, you know, I offered that, you know, that white supremacy at its core is a manifestation of, and you know, intergenerational ancestral trauma. And, um, and then I've also shared this toddler metaphor, um, you know, and, and about, you know, at its core again, white supremacy being about needing to heal trauma work. And one of the things that keeps coming up that I wanted to speak to today, right, is people being uncomfortable with those frameworks because there is some implied innocence um, and that people are grappling with this experience of implied innocence as, as applied to white supremacist delusion and white supremacy and whiteness. And here's what I want us to get into because I, I see it coming up again and again. And to me, it really speaks to the ways in which we, it's the reason why we don't do the inner work that's needed is because there's some relationship that we have with, um, with, well, it's not even some relationship. It is clearly the relationship that we have with what we mean about accountability. It's our relationship to accountability and our relationship to the binary of right and wrong and our relationship to the binary of guilt and innocence that keeps us from doing the work we need to do. Because here's the deal is most humans are not just monsters. They're not. <laughs> and it is so much easier for us to do that because to think that they are just monsters because it then orients the world in a way that, um, that disqualifies us from having to examine our similar behaviors, right? So they become monsters and then we become good people. Um, and so inside of this conversation, the discomfort happens when, when we are given access to reflect on some part of us that we understood as innocent and cannot see it or, or understand um, guilt, right? Or, or, and so what I offer is that I think the, uh, the framework, and this is why inside the work of the body is not an apology, tool number five is banish the binary. The reason we get stuck is because we live inside of some sort of dichotomous understanding of innocence and guilt where we, I, where we all exist as either or, Right? And so if I am innocent, then there's no way I can be guilty. And if I am guilty, then there's no way I could have ever been innocent. Stop that, y'all. It is such a trap. It is such a trap that keeps us from actually being able to hold the fullness of our harms and hold the fullness of the ways in which we've been harmed. And this is why models like transformative justice and healing justice work are so essential to building the new world because your approach to the conversation lives in the old world. Your approach to the conversation lives inside of the construction of the penal system inside of us. It is the system of policing inside of us that is, I am either guilty or innocent, which means either I need to be punished or I don't need to be punished, right? And what I am offering in these frameworks is to get outside of the conversation of punishment. Accountability is not punishment. Accountability is accountability. Accountability is the ability to acknowledge that there is harm you have created today that you need to make right as best as possible. And that that harm very well 
could have been born out of really, um, out of your own victimization. And that doesn't change the fact that you're harming people. It doesn't absolve you. Here we go back to the conversation of absolution. It does not absolve you from accountability. We are all of the above. So yes, do white people, like if epigenetics is true, if it is true that our cellular experiences are passed down to us from our ancestors, that there is residue and remnants of that, then there are elements of our behavior and elements of our experiences that have been in many ways, I'm not going to say out of our control, but outside of our conscious awareness. Right. And so if they are outside of our conscious awareness, it becomes very, very difficult unless we raise it to consciousness. To interrupt those things. So do I think whiteness in many ways is an epigenetic response to some dark and fucked up and twisted shit that white people have been propagating throughout history? Yes. Do I think that there is an essential need to heal some sort of core wound that created that? Absolutely. Does that make you um, innocent? Is that an excuse for the behavior? No. Most of the people that I know who engage in interpersonal violence, most of the people I know who, I, who have whooped people's asses in relationship are people who had their asses whooped as children or who witnessed the, the, their loved one having their asses whooped as children. They were victims in that experience. And then they became adults and they replicated that behavior. And they're no longer, that doesn't make them not accountable. That doesn't make them not responsible for their behavior today. But there is, it is important to have a context for where a behavior came from. The principle of Sankofa says that we must go back in order to go forward. You actually have to know where the thing came from to undo it. You actually have to be, go back and reckon with the source. And if you don't reckon with the source, the seed that grew the thing will grow another one. And so... But we can't see that because we're so busy trying to figure out if we're innocent or guilty, if we're good or bad, if we're wrong or right. And I really invite us to divest from that framework and invest in how can I be accountable today? How can I acknowledge the seed that created the harm and then how can I be accountable today? That's it. There is a real deep weddedness to these old systems. They live inside of us. They live inside the way we see the world. They live inside the way we see ourselves. They live inside the way we orient toward our own healing. And they either make us show up or they make us resist showing up. And I really invite us to move away and I get it. It's hard. It's certainly hard when, particularly if you are a person who have been harmed by someone, right? To hear, you don't care how they became that. You just care that they harmed you. And that's fine because it's not for you to care. But it is for the person doing the harm to be in reflection, to be in understanding. It is for the, they need to, or else they will repeat the harm. And so, no, if you are someone who has suffered at the hands of someone who's created harm, it's not your responsibility to know where that came from. Do I think it makes us more compassionate humans? Yes. Do I think it creates a space where we then are better hold, better able to hold our own harms? Yes, I do. But nevertheless, your first assignment is to worry about yourself, right? Your first assignment is to care for yourself. So do that. But for the person who has caused the harm, it is essential to understand and to go back and to heal the seed, the root of that. And usually the root of it is a place of our own victimization. So 
I'm really asking us to divest from this binary thinking, to divest from this good or bad, to divest from this right or wrong, and to get into how can I heal the root of the dis-ease so that I can be accountable to ending it and ending the harm it creates. That's the invitation. I hope we'll step into it.